Hi, and welcome back to the c -sharp Beginner Tutorial Series for the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we will learn how to get and remove a component that is attached to an entity. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to attach a ammo script or ammo component to this magazine model and in a different script, this getting a component demo script, we're going to retrieve that component and then display some of its values to the screen. So let's first have a look at the ammo script in our code. So we have a script here called ammo component and it contains two private variables, a max bullets and current bullets. And those are private, so we can't really access it outside of this script. But we do have this public method, which is called get remaining ammo. And it returns the, well, in this case, static values of 30 minus 12, which is 18 in our case. And so this, this information is publicly available, if at least we have a reference to this ammo component. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's first add that ammo component to our magazine model that we've selected here on top of the table. We're then going to click on add component. Then we're going to type in the name of that component that we have, which is in our case ammo component. And that's all we have to do for now inside the stride editor. Let's go back to Visual Studio and let's go to that getting a component demo script. So let's get a reference to that component. So how do we get that? All we have to do is say entity.get and then we have to specify the type or the name of that component, which is ammo component, followed by parentheses and a semicolon to close off the line. Now, we are retrieving this ammo component that is attached to it, but a very good practice or a very common practice to do is to make sure that we have a reference to this component from now on so that we don't have to retrieve that component every single frame. So we could store, if we would remove that line and just paste it back here, we could do that inside the update. And for the tutorial project, it wouldn't really be such a performance hit because it's a very small scene. There are very little scripts active at the same time. But you can imagine that if your game is, is kind of big and you have hundreds, if not thousands of scripts running at the same time, this will start to be a hit on your performance. So it's a very good idea. It's very common practice to store your components beforehand. And we can either do that in the start method or every time there's a certain collision or a certain event happens, then it's a good idea to get a component. So let's do that right now and just store that component inside a variable. So what we can do is say ammo component, let's just say ammo component, very, very basic variable, and that's where we're gonna store it in. So there we go. Let's just print that value to the screen. And all we have to do here is say ammo component, get remaining ammo. And then we have to provide the coordinates as usual. Close off that line. And now let's go back to Stride, run the game, and see what happens. The game has started, and if we click on getting a component, notice how the current ammo is at value 18, and we have this lovely little magazine model displayed in front of the camera. Okay, so far so good. Now it is possible that we have multiple components or multiple scripts of the same type attached to a model. We could say add another component and let's just add it a second time. Not every component can be added to a single entity multiple times. There are exceptions and in that case if we would click on add component a second time that script or that special component would simply no longer show up in this add component drop down list. But our ammo component, it is supported that we can attach it several times. So that's what we've done. We've added two times. 
So instead of having one of those AML components, we perhaps want to retrieve all of them. Let's create another variable, which in this case is going to be an I enumerable called AML component. Well, let's call that one AML components. We have to include system collections generic. And then all we need to do is say ammo components is entity get all and simply the name of our ammo component again. So now we're retrieving all the ammo components that are attached to our current entity. Now, in our case, we know that those ammo components are there and we know that that value can be printed out through the screen. However, it is perfectly possible that we have some sort of component or we're trying to retrieve some sort of component and that component is simply not attached to the entity. Now, the code will still run just as fine. It will not crash or throw an exception. However, let's say that this ammo component is not attached to our entity and then these two variables, they will stay null. So if we would go to stride and remove these two components right now and run the game, then at this specific point, we would get a null reference exception because we're trying to access this get remaining ammo method and ammo component is in our case null. It simply doesn't exist. So it's always a good idea to check if this component that we've retrieved, whether it is in fact there, whether it is not null. It is also possible that we want to remove a certain component from our entity. There are a couple of options here. Again, we need to use the entity object and then we can use the remove method. As you can see, there are a couple of examples here. At first, we can use the remove method with the parentheses and then we have to provide the actual variable where we have stored our component. And we can simply pass in this ammo component variable just fine. We can also say remove and then specify the type of component that we want to remove. However, just as with this entity get ammo component, this will only specify one specific ammo component. So this will remove the first ammo component that it will come across. And this could be any of the current ammo components that are attached. It could be the first one, it could be the last one. There's no guarantee to that. So what we can also say is entity remove all. And this would remove all scripts that are of type ammo component. It removes them from the entity. This concludes this tutorial on getting and removing components from an entity. In the next tutorial, we'll start adding components to an entity.